uh, we can today. The message has come through. So, uh, we're good. Um, as you know, we had the, uh, the pancake party on Tuesday. I'm told that the, the, the amount of money that raised towards the church hall was £180 and still rising. So, thanks a lot for that. That's great. And uh, we've got some special guests today, Paul and Linda. I think we should greet them, shouldn't we? We should say, welcome to Paul and Linda. Come on. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're familiar to... Uh, many in the church, and I think it's going to be great to get an update. If, if you're new to hearing Paul and Linda, then it's going to be good, good to hear what God's doing in the work in, in Turkey. That'll be useful. Um, and after the service, uh, assuming we've got coffee in the church still, and I'm not sure that's happening, but uh, there's a, a stall, a table being set up in the lounge, which has got... Uh, goodies in that you can buy that will contribute to the work in Turkey. Uh, and maybe you'll understand the context of that a little bit later. Um, blah, 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 blah. I know that in, um, Paul, Paul wants to, in his sermon today, he wants to do two different things. He wants to talk about the work of Turks' work, but he also wants to honour our service schedule that we're part of. So I'll be looking at both the Lord's Supper and the work in Turkey. And Linda has got something to say as well a bit later on. So it's going to be an interesting service, isn't it? Do we have birthdays? Anyone going to own up for a birthday? No, no birthdays? No one? Okay. So if the band can come together, the, um, the first song... What we're going to sing today is encouraging us to bless the Lord with all of our soul. And if we were to count the number of ways in which God has blessed us, you'd lose your hands and fingers because there's more than 10,000 of them. 10,000 10, reasons is the type of song. Day when my 
my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. bless you that it's your presence here today that makes our time so special Lord Lord and we want to pray that our praises would indeed be a blessing to you today that our hearts our minds our voices and our lives Lord would be directed towards you Lord we do recognize you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords you are the one who is over all. And though, Lord, we struggle at times to see what that means in practice, we know it to be true, Lord. And we do bless you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst in these days, Lord. And you do come to minister your love, your grace, your peace, your healing, your goodness into uh, to us heavenly father lord jesus christ lord we just give this time to you lord for you to come and minister to us to bless us in jesus precious name amen amen the next song reminds us our god reigns our god reigns and it's really good to proclaim that these days, isn't it? Our God reigns. Yeah. 
is taken from Luke's Gospel. Uh, it's in chapter 22. And I'm going to read from verse 13 through to 20. Through to 19. Through to 20, sorry. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said. And they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice <coughs> for you. So these are they're very familiar words because we read this or something like this every time we take communion, the Lord's Supper, whatever description we give to it as we take the bread and the wine. And here it's, uh, Jesus had wanted to share the Passover meal with his, uh, his disciples, those that he loved, those that he was closest to. Passover, of course, refers back in the, to the, uh, Jewish history when the uh, Israelis, the Jews, were captured in Egypt and the Lord... Uh, the angel of the Lord passed over those that had painted the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts. And for all the others, their firstborn sons were taken. A terrible time of, of mourning, and yet the few were spared. Those that applied the blood, great symbolism there. So Passover for the Jewish people was a time of celebration, celebrating life and freedom from death. It was a time of thanksgiving to God for the freedom from captivity that was about to come. And it was a time of remembrance for the love of God. And <clears throat> God never forgets us. And his love is constant. And they were celebrating that with the Passover meal, which uh, the, the Jewish people across the globe still do today. Well, here in Luke's Gospel, we see Jesus identifying himself with that Passover night, uh, all those hundreds of years previously. We see him revealing himself as the perfect Passover lamb, that when sacrificed, gives life to his people. Jesus was about to give up his life so that we can have life in exchange. Jesus was about to take our sins upon himself so that we might receive his holiness. He's about to be separated from his father because of those sins that he took, so that we can become sons and daughters of God. And so here at this last Passover meal that we, he shares with his friends, it's the last time this side of eternity that he said he's going to uh, drink wine with them and have that celebratory Passover meal. Um, so he, he shared that meal with his disciples. He drank wine, and he said that's the last time he'll drink it until the kingdom of God has uh, been established, until it's come. And then this is the verse I want to just say a little bit more about in a moment. But then he said he took the bread, and he blessed it. He gave thanks to God for it. He breaks it, and then he uses it, he gives it, he shares it. And that's, again, something we're familiar with when we 
speak together. He said, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, he said, which is poured out as a sacrifice to you. Jesus there was offering a new covenant, a new contract, a new agreement, a new unbreakable promise from God that those who believe to us, his church, to his people. And a covenant is a promise that God makes with us. And we receive by faith. But that promise, that covenant, also requires a response. That's part of the contract. I'll do this for you. You do this for me. I could talk a long time about covenant, but I won't. So we eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance that all of all Jesus has done for us. He took our death to give us life. And just as he rose again, then so shall we rise again. Those of us who are in Christ shall rise again. Death shall have no dominion. So we celebrate freedom, remembering and reminding ourselves of his victory for us. We give thanks to God for his goodness that all who believe will not perish but have everlasting life. And so, although they were celebrating the past, Jesus was instigating the future uh, and the the new uh, uh, agreement between God and us, his people. And over the centuries, we've all been doing that, his church. I just wanted to say briefly, because I guess our hearts are for mission, our hearts are for reaching out to people, that uh, when... Jesus takes the bread and he does it in several places through, uh, through the Gospels. And he takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives thanks for it. He uses it. Well, in a sense, I believe he uses that. Jesus used things as illustrations, didn't he? You know, he said about the farmer and the seed, and he used a spiritual uh, meaning to a, uh, something that we can see in front of our eyes. Uh, you know, you did the same with a fisherman. You know, I'll make you fishers of men. Not vicious old men, as I thought they sang initially. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think that that bread symbolizes something else. I think he, he takes, just as he took the bread, he takes us. He takes us when he reveals himself to us as saviour. He takes us from darkness into light. And then he blesses, he blessed the bread, he gave thanks to the bread, and he does that with us. He blesses us with the knowledge of the love of God and the presence of his Holy Spirit dwelling in us and giving us the power to live the new life in Christ that following Jesus brings. And for most of us, we kind of come to a, a bit of a, a pause or a full stop even at that point. We're so grateful that uh, we've, uh, we've found a saviour, or he's found us actually, um, and we've given our lives, we t- we're seeking to follow him, we have his Holy Spirit indwelling us, and we begin that new life. But if we want more, and I think most of us do, at different times we, w- we want more, we want to be, we want to be used I think there's a breaking. So not only does he take, he blesses, but there's a breaking. And if we want to be used, God does a breaking in us. He tears away the unnecessary, which can sometimes be painful because we want to hold on to some of these things. He humbles us. He humbled me. And he takes us back to basics that it's him, it's Jesus, it's God, it's the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit working in us that does all good things. Not Paul that's doing the good things. We realize it's him. And then, once he's done that breaking, whatever it might be, and it can be different for all of us, I believe, then he uses us for his glory. Once we realize that it is all Jesus, that it's him who came to us. It's him who gave us his Holy Spirit so that we can be Christ-like in our new life 
and in his strength. He equips us for service, whatever that might be, by taking us, blessing us, breaking us, and then using us. And when we take communion, the bread and the wine, not only do we remember his sacrifice for us, but we remember that he calls upon us to respond. A covenant requires response, a response of obedience. And the thing that he says to his church was to go into all the world, to make disciples of all people, to baptize them, and to teach them all to respond in obedience to his call, the way we were following Jesus. He calls us, the church, to be Christ to our neighbors and our friends and our countrymen and those over the seas. Uh, so thank you and God bless. Amen. of sea and sky I have heard my people cry all who dwell in dark and sin my hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make the darkness bright who will bear my light to them shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you People's pain, I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you need me. I will hold your people in my heart. By the Tend the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied, I will give my life to them, whom shall I save? Oh,
Christ's town, the Church of God away, God saving news to all the nations. is all he will in grace respond to all who call how shall they call if they have never heard the gracious invitation of his word go forth and tell where still the darkness lies in well for once the sinner surely does give us the Lord concern of heart and mind a love like yours which cares for all mankind go forth and tell doors are open wide. Share God's good gifts, let no one be denied. Live out your life as Christ your Lord shall choose. Your answer bows for his soul glorious. Go forth and tell Church of God arise, go in the strength which Christ your Lord supplies, go till all nations his great name adore, and serve him, Lord and King Of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.